Hi everyone, really lovely to see you here. Um, I think I'm live. I'm just quickly checking if everything works. So, microphone a little bit closer. Camera is working. I think we are ready to get started. It's really lovely to see you. If you're joining in today, let me know just in the chat um, who you are, where you're joining from, are you drawing along? I'm just really curious to find out. So, um, what's the plan today? Oh, before we start, I accidentally went live yesterday as well because I was confused to the days of the week, can you believe it? Um, so there was two live sessions this week, one yesterday and uh, one today. So it's, uh, I, I realized this morning and I was really laughing at myself. Um, yeah, so two live sessions this week for that reason. Just quickly making sure my sound is on. Yeah, I think so. Wonderful. Oh, from Essex. That's not so far away. Really lovely to see you, Emily and Carol. Um, what are we doing today? We're going to sketch in color pencils. And there's a spread we did a little while ago. I'm just going to quickly see if I can find it. Uh, not this one. It was one where we were sketching fruits. Mm, I don't think it was this far back. It was one where we were sketching fruit and everyone really enjoyed it. It's one of the most popular videos on my channel and everyone really loved watching it. So I thought let's do something a little bit similar and do sketching vegetables today. So I'm just going through my sketchbook, see if I find the page to quickly show you. Uh, no, not here. It is definitely in here. No. Um, so just bear with me a second, not this one, not this one, it doesn't really matter either, but I know it is in here. So I've used this sketchbook a lot for these live sessions um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's almost fun. I think I'll just buy the same one again because I really like the size. This was the one. This is the page that we did a little while ago uh, where we were sketching fruit and I really enjoyed it and I thought we're going to work a little bit similar using color pencils and sketching vegetables instead. So I don't know if I'll do all the twirls around it. Um, but yeah. And I um, am using photos from Pinterest. I linked the Pinterest boards to the um, to the chat so if you want to have a look on Pinterest you can find all the reference pictures there but I will share them on screen as well every time I use a picture I will pin it to my board so back to the page where we're on I've only got two pages left and then the book is full so I don't know if I really need to clip it today it seems to stay open quite well there we go. Hi Alvin, really lovely to see you. It's always lovely to see you. Just quickly checking if anyone is joining in here as well. So I am using my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. I have a big set. Uh, these are all the blues and greens, but I have some other colors here as well. But you can join in using any brand or color pencil set. And it doesn't matter if they're large or small. And the first picture that I wanted to start with was these um, this pot of peas because I just thought it looked really cute. Let me make it a bit larger on screen. There we go, and I have already pinned that to the board. I thought that'd be a really interesting vegetable to start with. There we go. I am, um, I just really like the look. Of that. So I'm going to start with some green and when you feel ready feel free to join in and if you have any questions at any point ask away. I'm always happy to help, to chat. So there we go. I've, I've tried to grow beans in my garden so many times but they never work. Um, they're supposed to be a really easy vegetable to grow but I uh, find them very difficult. So just making sure that you can see my paper and then we'll just dive straight in there. So there we go. Deep breath. Let's get ready for this sort of creative exercise. It always takes a few moments just to be ready, ground yourself in the moment before you start drawing. 
Um, I just picked a random green that I thought would go quite well with these piece. And I'm just going to start with a large shape. So in any type of drawing or painting that I make, I always start with large shapes first. So, so if I sort of make this to roughly here. So, and I always start just with a large shape first and then slowly go in for more detail. So first I'm just thinking, okay, how much space do I want this, this particular real sketch to take on my paper? Am I going to use my entire paper, only a little corner, or how much, how much space do I want to give it? And then I'm just looking at these main shapes, thinking, okay, do I see a circle, and uh, maybe a square or a triangle? What are the base shapes that I'm noticing for each of these, each of these shapes? In this case, these leaves. So, so I'm just sort of sketching it out, making a little bit of an, a plan. And you can see that I'm going over each, actually I can use a slightly darker color. It's a bit easier to see. You can see that I'm going over each of these lines a few times. It's not like, oh, just one line and then it's perfect. And that's the, the space that we, uh, the shape that we have to create. I'm purposefully going over each area a few times to uh, yeah, search for that right shape. So, so you can sort of start seeing, I'm just quickly checking on screen if you can see what it is that I'm doing. Yeah, I am sharp, I just slowly make it a little bit darker and then it's a bit easier to see. So as so you can see, I just like to slowly explore. Say that's okay. Actually, this bean is a bit longer in reality. That's okay. We're not going for sort of hyper photorealism. Just going for something inspired by this photo today. And this is only sort of a quick sketching session. So it's okay to let go of perfectionism a bit and just have some fun. Um, I spent the whole morning making abstract little paintings in my other sketchbook, which I just completed. It's full, so I'm going this um, this evening. I'm going to film a sketchbook tour, so that's going to be up on my channel soon. Um, I always love seeing sketchbook tours and uh, filming them as well. It's always like a little win when you complete the sketchbook, isn't it? When you have all those pages full, and then you um, yeah, you give a really sort of sense of achievement to uh, to finish a sketchbook. I'm really looking forward to finishing this one as well, especially because it has so many pages. And for a long time, I only used to draw on loose sheets of paper, uh, but I've really fallen back in love with sketchbooks. And this is something that I am, um, yeah, I'm using more and more again. So if any of you are new here, I run this uh, live every week uh, on YouTube. And since this week, I am also streaming on Facebook. I'm just sort of trying that out to see if that works well. I'm just quickly checking and it looks like it is. So I'm also streaming on Facebook to um, yeah to try that out to see if it's a new platform, if people enjoy that as well. Um, but yeah, I run this session every week uh, and I, yeah, I do lots of courses and workshops and other things as well. But this is a consistent sort of sketchbook session, quite loose and free and opportunity for people to ask me some questions and just to say hi and yeah, find some creative time together. Actually, I think I might leave it like this. There's a lot of extra leaves in the background that I think I'll leave out and then I'll put some other vegetables around them. There we go. So this is going to be sort of the base shape that I'm creating. So you can see I'm sort of slowly started to refine that shape already. And what I'm going to do once I have those basic shapes in place is start to add some base colors. And of course this is all green, but I'm still noticing quite a lot of different tones of green. Some really dark shadows and some lighter area. So I'm adding some lighter green here to these piece and sort of to the edges. 
and I might actually use a contrasting color, a purple or a blue or a different color for the shadows. Because I want to show you, you don't always have to stick with the realistic colors. And I also want to show you that if you um, don't have multiple colors green, so maybe you don't have a light green and a dark green, that you can still join in and then make the shadows in a different color. So that's what I'm going to do. So, so I'm just quickly giving a bit of a base tone to all these leaves. Uh, there we go. Not doing it super precise. I could really spend hours just really carefully shading all of these edges, but I want to be a little bit quick and loose today as well. So, so this leaf here seems to have been eaten on a bit by a slug or something. So let's pick a shadow color. Um, one of my favorite shadow colors is purple. Should I use that one? Sort of my normal go-to color. Yeah, why not? Purple and green, very different colors. So that makes it a bit easier to see. So I'm just making sure that I'm sharp. And I'm a bit of a messy sketcher. And um, some of you might know this about me already. I am, um, I quite like just for drawings not to be perfect. I think sort of the whole aiming for perfection. First of all, I don't think it's possible because you set yourself impossible standards if you want to, if you're a perfectionist and you want your drawing to be hyper realistic and perfect. Um, it also just takes way too long. I'm a very impatient person. I like sketching quick, putting things on the paper, and then the next day I want to draw something else. So the type of artworks where it takes you months to complete because you want it to be super realistic is not really something that I personally enjoy. I really admire people who do that, but I'm just not very good at that. Same with, for, for example, knitting or you know other crafts that take a long time. I have started so many jumpers in my life, knitting, knitting jumpers, and I've never completed one. Uh, the last one that I started, I gave to my mum to finish and we just took it all out and she used the wool for something else. She's really good at knitting. She makes all sorts of different things. I just don't have the patience for that. I like small projects that I can complete quite quickly and then move on and do something else after that. So I like to do the same in my uh, drawings as well. And I ex like exploring. I enjoy exploring lots of different techniques and materials and subjects. Some days I want to draw people, sometimes animals, sometimes I want to draw um, well, like portrait landscapes. I just really have a big variety of things that I like to incorporate in my art and I use all of those for the courses that I teach and stuff as well. I just I get a bit bored otherwise. Life's too short to only pick one thing and then stick with it. So, and yes, that's, a, that's sort of my way of working. So also when I do a drawing, I am, I'm not much of a perfectionist. I much rather make a messy drawing every day than sort of going for perfection and then not draw at all, which often is the result of perfectionism, right? Because it can be really like with that feeling of, oh, everyone else is better than me. Everyone else's drawings look better. I, um, my drawing never looks the way I expect it to look. Um, all these sort of intrusive thoughts that you can have when you make art, they can really stop you from making art. And I um, I just think that's, uh, that's sad and it's nice to make things and it's okay if it's a bit wonky. So that's something that I really try to, to tell everyone. Hi, Linda, really lovely to see you again as well. Always great to see you. So, so I'm just slowly carrying on after that little rant about not being a perfectionist. So, um, I am making a series of paintings at the moment where I'm really trying to take a bit more time for each of the artworks and I'm adding lots of little detail in. But even then, I don't do any sketches, I go straight in with ink and um, even in that situation, I am not a perfectionist like other people are. 
I, um, I just go for it and then see what happens. And then most of the time it actually works out all right. That's the, the other thing. The more you practice, the easier it gets. And usually it, um, it works out all right. So I'm switching to some darker green, just mixing that up a bit, adding in some darker colors. I think green and purple go together really well. I know it's not really a standard sort of color scheme, but I just think they go together really lovely. So, there we go. I also have a really, I really like sketching on location and I, it was my new year's resolution a few years ago to sketch out and about more often. And I have actually kept it quite well. I finished a few sketchbooks with plan air or uh, urban sketching. I even set up a local urban sketching group, um, which now has sort of stopped a bit because it's way too cold. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. But the, um, yeah, I'd like to do it more, and all, especially people. I like to make drawings of people out and about in the in the wild, in coffee shops and places. So, so you can see that I'm really using a sort of sketch approach for today's drawing. I am. I do teach some courses where I really focus on creating like realistic effects with pencil and different me blending mediums and like different techniques. On how to use your pencil, but for a quick sketchbook sketch, I um, quite like being a bit more loose. So. Making these look a bit more like leaves. So I do want the piece itself to look a bit more sort of shiny and vibrant. This would actually have been a really nice drawing to make on black paper as well with that dark background. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing some sessions on black paper at some point. I did, and then if you go to my YouTube channel, the first video that is sort of, I can, I can pin a video to the top. The video that I've pinned to the top is a drawing on black paper. Of, an, uh, of a lizard and um, it's a lot of fun to draw on black paper it really really makes sure your artwork pop the, the colors stand out even more so if you've never tried it it's, uh, I'd recommend it give it a go you don't need any special pencils for it you can use any type of color pencil um, you can buy special pencils for black paper but you don't uh, you don't need them so Let's add a bit more, I've got a slightly more vibrant green here to the, to the piece. So, and I want to make sure I leave a little highlight, shiny sort of spot on each of them. So, nice and colorful. What have I been up to today? I went for a run today and there was this really big lovely goofy dog that was really playful that followed me for a little bit and luckily i'm not afraid of dogs i can imagine that for some people that sounds like a nightmare um but i'm not afraid of dogs I, and it was really friendly i think it was just a puppy but it was enormous so it was like a bit out of control with its limbs and stuff so that really made me chuckle um i still oh, i updated my website put lots of new artwork on there and stuff so that's been really fun it always feels like a really productive thing to do because you instantly feel like you can see the result of it, which is really nice. Some tasks you do, like um, your website's SEO, which is sort of how you be found in Google and stuff like that, takes a lot of time to sort that out. But it's not very... Um, you can't really see the result of it directly. It's really good for you in the long term, but you, know, you can spend the whole day on it and the end of the day it's like... Pff, what have I really done? You can't see it. Um, but by uh, like adding photo galleries and stuff, you can really clearly see what you've done. So that is really nice. So 
I'm sort of trying to update things and yeah, make everything clear on there. So I've done that, went for a run. I finished my sketchbook, so I made quite a few pictures in there. So I will share that sketchbook. I'm planning to film a sketchbook tour after this, because I have my camera set up and everything ready. So that means I can just go straight in there and film it. And then the, um, the pictures that I made as drawings in there, I will share in my creative community. So that, um, that's where, um, yeah, if anyone's curious where you can find them and I'll make tutorials over them. So some voiceovers of how to, um, yeah, my thought process behind these drawings and stuff like that. So these are all things I have to do. It's not actually finished yet. Mm, try adding a little bit of black just here for the shadows. So, and then I want to go to the next veggie, otherwise we'll never be able to finish this page in sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. So, so the colors I've used are purple, a few different colors, green, and now some black. So, I always quite like a bit of a surprise color in, uh, in each drawing. Let's have a look. What shall I put on for the next picture? Mm. Let's pick some other vegetables. I think a pumpkin is sort of prudent, isn't it, this time of year? So I was looking, I looked for colorful vegetables, actually. Squash. I love um, pumpkins and squashes. So, um, should I can make that a little bit bigger. I am I'm using this program that I used to share photos uh, during my live streams and during my classes. Uh, called OBS, which if you ever want to do an online class, I'd really recommend to use it because it's free and it works really well. And I, so I used it now for four years. I'm quite good at sort of adding different photos to it and having my uh, my camera on myself and on my paper and stuff. But it took me such a long time to figure it out. I, uh, like what camera to use and how to set things up and what sort of wire you need it and like how to use my um, mirror, my uh, DSLR to connect it to my computer, all these sort of things. It uh, was a long learning curve, but this is all, it's all sorted out for a few years now, but yeah, I think this is going to be here. And I think because, do you know, a pumpkin plant also has these curly sort of tentacle um, branches with lots of big leaves. So maybe there can be some curly branches on there as well. I know I'm going a bit all over the place with what I'm talking about and what I am sketching. So um, apologies for that. If you have an, uh, a question about something, let me know. It is going to be here. Um, so I'm looking at that pumpkin and of course pumpkin is round, but if I look at that shape, it is not a like, perfectly round shape, right? From the angle that we're looking at it. It's a bit more sort of narrow. Um, yeah, so if I would have to sketch that front part out, I would say it's sort of, this is where the stem is. So I'm just going to go over the other one or sort of have that connected. So, see a bit more like an, also like a bean shape sort of, if I only focus on the front part. So, maybe roughly like this, can you see that? I'll make it a bit darker in a moment. So that those um, sections that are a bit hidden in the back, they're actually a bit more uh, sort of smaller. We can only see parts of that. So 
maybe I will make this into you know how a, how a pumpkin grows so I'm going to make this a stem into a bit of an um, and uh, a branch or whatever you call that and uh, so and then with some twirly sort of bits of it You see that in the sketch? I think you can see it quite well. So I'm working really light. I'm just figuring out sort of what composition. I like the idea of these vegetables will be intertwined a little bit. Um, as you might have noticed, I'm sketching straight with color. And I don't always do that. Sometimes I quite like using a um, um, sketch pencil first. I really like sketching in color because I don't have to worry about that silvery color of the sketch pencil sort of at the end. I just can go straight in with the colors that I want and all those little lines that are a bit out of place, they, um, you won't really notice them anymore in the end. Once you go in a bit darker, it's, uh, it's almost like they disappear a bit. I um, always order my vegetables from an uh, organic food box company um, from a farm called Riverford. They are here in the UK in Devon. So, um, yeah, every week they deliver a box of vegetables to my house. And they do this pumpkin box as well. And I um, have ordered it every year for the last sort of five years. And you get this big box with lots of different squashes and pumpkins. And it just gives me so much joy. I really love it. Um, I could have actually brought some here today to draw from life. It's a bit easier for me to share a photo. Actually, I should have saved this, shouldn't I? Let me quickly do that. So drawing ideas. Yes, yeah, so if you, it's now on my Pinterest board. Um, but yeah, it gives me so much joy, all these different squashes. And they keep for a long time as well. So I just put them on the table to decorate the table. And then one after the other, they all uh, get eaten. But some, they, uh, some you can keep for months, so they can stay on the table for quite a long time. So I'm going to add some base color. I noticed that my confidence is growing a little bit. So when I first started drawing, I'm always a bit more careful. And then the longer I am doing that art, the um, yeah, the longer, the more time I spend on my sketchbook the uh, more confidence I get. So sometimes it takes a few moments. I'm just quickly checking here. Sometimes um, I start really careful and then slowly that um, that carefulness goes away and then the drawing process becomes a bit easier. So I'm noticing that I start to reach that point where I'm, um, I'm a bit more confident and I'm going in a bit darker. If you feel like it takes you a little bit longer and you want to go in with softer color first, you can absolutely do that. Don't feel like you instantly have to go in as dark as I'm doing. Uh, it's absolutely fine if it takes you a little bit longer. So, so work at your own pace. So I'm trying to add in some darker colors here as well. I'm going to add some of these marks on that uh, skin of the pumpkin. And when I add those marks, I'm sort of taking inspiration from what I'm seeing in that photo, but I'm quite happy for those marks to be in slightly different places or to be a little bit, a little bit different. So this is a very, if anyone did join in yesterday, uh, this is a very different session. Yesterday we were doing abstract watercolors uh, in my watercolor sketchbook and we were doing very, um, yeah, sort of loose abstract watercolor patterns and shapes, um, which was a lot of fun, but a very, very different uh, spread from this. So um, I like to switch it up when I make art. Um, 
See, I'm going in quite dark straight away. Actually, let's make this orange as well. When I say quite dark, you know, when you have pressure on your pencil and you can go in really light where your color is almost non-existent up to really, really dark, sort of, I don't really want to do that here, but say here, here I put sort of 10 out of 10 pressure on and put, make it really dark and it becomes like that sort of burnishing effect, shiny, shiny layer. Um, most of the time I'm sort of somewhere in between, maybe on a six. So I'm not going in really dark, but I'm also not, um, yeah, not a super light, it's just somewhere, somewhere in between. If I'm trying to draw really realistic, so say I want to do a portrait and create really realistic skin tones, I would go in much lighter than this. Um, but for a pumpkin, the colors are a bit more bold, you don't have to worry so much about creating that perfect tone that's exactly the same as in the picture. Um, so I'm a little bit less careful with this picture than what I would be with um, yeah, a different type of drawing, if that makes sense. So. If you want to speed up your color pencil drawing, you can always try and combine color pencil with some other mediums. Um, so if you do like an underlayer painting, which is something that I do a lot um, in some of my courses, but also uh, I have done in some of these live sessions. If you do an underlaying painting, either with watercolor paint or with watercolor pencils and then make it wet and then um, create an, uh, yeah sort of painterly effect underneath. Or if you use alcohol markers underneath, you um, have that base color to draw on top of and you instantly make your entire drawing process so much faster because color pencil is quite a slow medium. And it is quite nice to, uh, yeah, to make it a bit faster sometimes. So there is some tricks, some things that you can do to make the process a bit faster. If that is something that you struggle with, if um, if you really like the look of color pencil, but you want to, uh, yeah, want to make that a bit faster. So, so mixing up some green with this aubergine, which is a bit of a strange color combination, but I really like it. So that means that this this uh, leaf, this uh, branch has a bit of a strange tone. I'm a huge fan of just mixing up random colors and let's see what happens. So. so let's add a bit of green in the pumpkin as well. So just a few patches. There we go. How's everyone getting on with the, the drawing of the pumpkin? If um, you have any questions or any anything else that you want to share, I'm uh, always curious to hear. And also, if you share any of your pictures on social media, um, on Instagram or on Facebook, make sure you tag me in the photos because you can tag me as making some musings and then that way I can see them. Um, I used to say to people use the hashtag making some musings, but that doesn't really work very well anymore because hashtags, um, they have sort of changed, the, yeah, the system has changed that when you look at a hashtag, it only shows the most popular, um, sort of the most liked or the most views po post for that hashtag. So not the most recent ones. That means that, yeah, the chances of me actually seeing it is very small. Which is a bit sad. I quite liked the way it was before, but it's uh, it's okay. Sometimes things change. What vegetables should we do next? Maybe something red, a pepper. Mm. So we 
can't actually see that, can you? And I'll make that a bit bigger. Mm, bear with me a second, all this advertising on. That's uh, just the advertising on uh, on Pinterest. Oh, there we go. A little bit smaller again. I am. I'm always quite careful with using Pinterest for this sort of sketchbooking. It is absolutely fine. Maybe that one. That's a nice classic red pepper. Um, and that does look a bit like that pumpkin as well, doesn't it? Let me have another look. I think for just practicing your sketchbook using an uh, using a pepper works really great and I um, I think you can absolutely do that. If you want to use pictures for anything commercial, uh, be really careful with Pinterest because all the pictures are uh, copyright protected and you um, yep, someone owns them and you, uh, you cannot just use them for commercial pieces of art. But for just sketching some vegetables, it is fine. And I'm, uh, I'm not going to sell this page. This is just me practicing. So, so we're going for more of more of a pointy pepper, either a spicy one or an. Um, yeah, you, know, you have these like pointy Spanish peppers that are really tasty. They're quite sweet. So something like that. Thank you, Linda. That's really lovely to hear. I, uh, I really love creating with you as well. Quick sip of tea and then I'm going to carry on. Hmm. Sorry, I missed your message earlier there. Magali? Magali? I don't know how, where the emphasis is in your name. Um, all the way from New York City. That's really wonderful. So thank you so much for joining in. So, so the I think I'm going to put the pepper a little bit at an angle. So I'm just I'm looking at the photo, but I'm changing it a bit so it fits in nicely with this page. And I think once I've added that in, this side of the paper is going to be quite full. So, so if the pepper sort of starts here, it has a bit of a rounded sort of start, and then I'm going to give it a bit of an twist here at the end. So again, looking at those photos for inspiration, but making it into something that is my own. Then there's some really queer shadows on these. They're a bit sort of wrinkly. So if those shadows are going to be here, that is going to be the darker part. So I'm just sort of sketching it out, focusing on those shapes. The stem can be here. Going behind the other ones, so. And then the top is a bit curved as well. So if this is a bit rounded in here. See how it slowly starts to get shape? Maybe there's a bit of an unkiness to this outside. It's not quite straight, is it? So. Often things look more realistic and more fun if the uh, lines are not perfectly straight. There's not many things in nature that are perfectly round, perfectly straight, and perfectly like perfect, perfect, perfect. It's always a bit wonky and natural, and a bit. There's so many things that just, um, yeah, they're just much more interesting if they are a bit more um, fluid and a bit more wonky. So this that line, I'm sort of purposefully trying not to get that too straight, but really putting a bit of pressure on my pencil and making it a bit. Um, yeah, a bit more natural, a bit more curvy. So, so let's start adding in some color. There's some really clear, shiny highlights on this pepper. So I can sort of outline them a bit and then leave them free. Or just be a bit careful and go around them. Again, those shapes do not have to be exactly the same as the... Um, once in the photo, but it's quite sort of a nice idea to leave some highlights in them. So. There we go. I 
I am also planning to film a new Skillshare class next week. Is, um, does anyone here go on Skillshare sometimes? It's uh, um, I used to do lots of classes on Skillshare. I've sort of stopped it a little bit because um, yeah, I do my own classes and I'm always quite busy, so I didn't really have much time to do other classes. But it's a lot of fun, and yeah, I'm, I'm a Skillshare teacher, so I have filmed some courses for there, and I'm currently looking at doing some more. And I am planning, if anyone uses Procreate, which is like the digital drawing app, and um, they're starting a new, they're, they've launched a new app that is coming out on the 22nd of September, uh, October, what is it, November? October, and so the, so the app is coming out the 22nd of November, I need to say this clear. And I am planning to create a little mini course with it as soon as the app comes out. So I've given myself a week to familiarize myself with it and then um, to do a course to make a little animation. And I know that's a bit ambitious, but I have used other animation apps in the past and I think I can probably learn it quite quick. It's going to be very much a beginner's course. I'm going to keep it really simple for people who want to try that. Yeah, okay, that's in the planning. I'm not hundred percent sure if it's a good idea, but I'd really like to. And there's also a big benefit in being one of the first people who makes a course with something. So I want to be a bit of an early adopter there and do that quick. So I've got a few other courses on Skillshare at the moment. But, uh, yeah, people watch quite regularly and it's fun for me. Let's stick with these same colors. So I'm going to use a bit of this purple for the shadows. So you can see I'm slowly starting to add in a bit more color. So. And I am a little bit more of a traditional artist. I do use uh, digital drawing apps and illustration apps, um, both on the computer as well as for on my uh, tablet. But I just think we spend so much time looking at screens already. It's just really nice to make art that is handmade and just use pen and paper and I get so much joy out of that. So I am, um, most of the time I work traditional and as a project need some digital art or if I need to digitalize something. Then, uh, yeah, then I use that as well. So for commissions, I often work digital. It's just much easier to make changes and to adapt things to what a client needs. Is if um, if you work digital, I'm adding in a bit of green in this pepper. So let's also add maybe some more branches around it. I want that page to feel like like it's sort of uh, interacting with each other. I still have an, um, a pepper plant in my garden with bell peppers and there's this tiny pepper on it growing, but it's way too cold now and I'm sort of giving up on it. Um, but I can't really bring myself to take it away. I don't have a greenhouse, so it's, uh, it's just too late for it to grow to full. To a full plant and I don't really want to take it inside either. So I'm not very successful in growing vegetables this year. Can we have a quick look from a bit of a distance, see what that looks like. So I think the page has to be quite full. I think this one needs to stand out a bit more, show a bit more what it is. So I think I'm going to add a bit more color in that one. So, where was I? Let's add a little bit more color here. So I'm just 
I'm not even looking at that photo, I'm just outlining this a bit more. Just see if I can make that, that pot stand out a little bit more. So I'm using that purple. I'm really into listening to audiobooks recently. And um, I've signed up to a Dutch audiobook app. Um, and it's really comforting to listen to some books in Dutch, uh, which of course is my mother tongue. And uh, I do everything in English sort of in my daily life and my partner's English and we sort of yeah I think and dream in English but it's really comforting to listen to an audiobook in my uh, in my mother tongue so I'm really enjoying that so I'm listening to some books and so if anyone has any book recommendations um, there, there are some English books on there as well but they um, a lot of them are translated I think I'm just going to try it for a couple of months and then might switch to an, uh, a UK audiobook provider, but I just not found the the uh, international ones being very good. I um, looked at some different ones, but often you can only listen to one audiobook a month. And on Spotify, you can listen to 15 hours of audiobooks a month. And that sounds like a lot, um, but it's for me, it's not that much because I listen to a lot of audiobooks sort of constantly when I'm painting. And sometimes I paint for an entire day and then, uh, yeah, it just goes really fast. After like after one week, my 15 hours is up and then the rest of the month, I uh, I can't listen to anything anymore. So I'm, um, also my local library does uh, a lot of audiobooks and libraries in England are free. So if um, I'd really recommend it. If you're based in the UK, just get a library membership and then uh, most of them have an, uh, a digital library as well. But I've listened to a lot of books there that I found interesting and then I, yeah, I'm sort of struggling a little bit there now. So I, uh, I decided to move on from the library. But yeah, the fact that libraries are free is just fantastic. In the Netherlands you have to pay for a library membership if you're an adult. Um, but yeah, here they are free and the good thing about an getting digital books is that they return automatically <laughs> which uh, means you don't have to think about bringing them back in you know when you get fines and stuff like that so if you borrow an, uh, a digital book it just returns automatically in the date that it needs to so that saves a lot of uh, trouble for me that's one of the things about libraries that the returning of books and you always uh, I was always too late so I want the pumpkin to be a little bit more full in color. So, so I'm just switching up my oranges a little bit and just starting to add in a bit more vibrancy there. Also, I love reading physical, like actual books with you know letters instead of audio books. Um, but you can't do anything else when you read a book, which is sort of the nice thing about it. But when you're um, when you're painting, it's just really nice to listen to a book. You can't really watch anything anyway, but listening works really well. So it's uh, it's sort of the perfect compromise for me. I also really love listening to podcasts, but sometimes. Um, you just want to be entertained, listen to a novel. So. Just decorating the page a little bit more. to bring it all together. How's everyone getting on with their drawings? I'm really curious. Let me know how you're finding it. I think we started with the most difficult one, didn't we? Maybe a bit of pink in there as well. So. Mm, 
Here we go. I think I'm going to say my page is finished. Let's have a little zoom in and out. So you can see my cup of tea here. I think I do want a little bit more. Maybe some black here and there. You can always use a black pen as well. I am quite sparse with using black in my color pencil drawings. So I usually save it till the end. And if there's an area where I really want to add some extra shadow, I can do that. But black can be quite overpowering. So I always recommend save it till last. And then if you really... Um, You can use it sort of for some extra emphasis somewhere or for those really dark shadows that you couldn't really add in without. It also changes the tone of the drawing a little bit, makes it a bit more sort of serious and dark. Plus, if you don't use any black, it keeps things a bit lighter and a bit softer. So it's, um, it's a quite a clear style choice to add in black. There we go. I think I'll just need to get myself a new sketchbook for next week. I think I will finish these two pages today. So then uh, this one is full. So I'll get myself a new sketchbook for next week. I have my nice sketchbook there, which I could also use I quite like to be a little bit messy. When I say my nice sketchbook, it's a bit more sort of curated. Um, yeah, so this one is uh, is really for uh, for some looser sketches and some some experimentation. This, this was when I was I was drawing with my niece. So that's um, and then also some animal sketches. So let me know if there's something specific you'd like to practice. If you want to do some animal drawings or um, yeah, some buildings, maybe we can also do a bit of an a bit of a landscape or people. We can do some figure drawings, another portrait. Let me know if there's something that you would like to draw and I'll keep that in mind. I can't promise that I will do it immediately, but I always, um, yeah, I can have a look. So thank you so much for joining in. I will stop this as well. So thank you so much for joining in and I will see you all soon. Oh yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you too. We don't, we don't really celebrate Thanksgiving in England. Um, uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I uh, hope you have a lovely time. Thank you, Annie. Really lovely to see you. Uh, take care and hopefully I'll see you all next week. Three o'clock on Thursday is uh, the time to be here. Um, I don't always schedule them ahead because it sort of clocks up my YouTube channel a bit, so usually I schedule it in sort of on the same day, but unless I email, um, you can uh, count that it's happening. Bye-bye.